What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Open CV with Python tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how you can go about making your own har cascades for object uh, detection. So the idea of har cascades as you were shown in the previous tutorial was for detecting specific types of objects and we showed how to detect a face and some eyes. Now we did this with har cascade files that were already created for us. And there are a lot of hard cascade files that are already created, things like faces and bodies and eyes and license plates and cars and stuff like this. But for um, anything beyond really popular hard cascade types or uh, object recognition types of things that you're gonna be looking for, you just simply will not find them. And the reason why, for one, is they're just, they're hard to create and generate. And then also, I mean, there might be some located in some obscure places in the web, but it's gonna just be really difficult to find them. So it's useful if you can create your own hard cascade files. So to do that, you, you can create your own hard cascades on a Windows machine, but it's a lot, it's a lot different. The steps are gonna be a little different as far as setup is concerned, as opposed to on Mac or Linux. Now you can get a Mac, or well, you can't get a Mac server. Well, you probably could, but you can get a Linux server for really cheap. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to follow. We're going to go through the steps on a Linux server. You can even get a Linux server for free on something like AWS's free tier. Um, ideally, you want a bigger server. Uh, the amount of time that you're going to need this server is probably two to four hours at most. And most hosts nowadays will charge you by the hour for your server anyway. So we're talking about it's going to cost you a dime or something. So, um, so if you Windows users have a dime to spare, go for it. You can use the free tier AWS server. You just won't be able to do as much training or on a, as large of a data set as would be ideal. So I really do suggest you get a server. Um, something like DigitalOcean, you can get a pretty cheap server. Uh, and you can just pay by the hour. Um, I would recommend getting a two gigabyte server. Again, just use it for the four hours that you might need it and then uh, get rid of it, okay? So it won't cost you very much. I'll put a link to DigitalOcean in the description. So um, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna talk about, you know, what is the actual process for a uh, hard cascade? So uh, the hard cascade the way that we're gonna make them is you first, you have to have negative or background images. And these are images that do not contain whatever your object is that you're tracking. And then you're gonna have positive images. Now these are images that do contain the object that you're tracking. Ideally, you're gonna have thousands of these. You'd like to have double the amount of positive uh, images that you have for n negative or background images when it comes to time to train. So uh, just keep that in mind. The For the positive images, you can either collect them yourself or you can create them. And um, I'll show you guys in a little bit, but we'll be using a website called ImageNet, which is like WordNet, if you're familiar with WordNet. Uh, but bottom line, you can search for images and you can download them or at least find links to them very quick and easily. So that's what we'll be using. So uh, you need negative and positive images. You can either pull the positives or you can um, create them with OpenCV. We'll just actually create them dynamically with OpenCV. So it'll be really easy. So you'll just need one positive image. Uh, the image that I will be using is this image here. It's, of, it's just of the face of my watch. Uh, I recommend you use an image of your own. Just uh, try to make it the same size as my image. So this is a 50 by 50 image. So just find, it, find an object you want to track, make it fill up 50 by 50 pixels, and then follow along with whatever image you have. If at any point you're failing or whatever, you can always go back and grab one of my images and then train and see what, where you maybe went wrong. So once you have all of that, you for the, uh, we'll, we'll return back to how you're gonna organize these images, but then you, what ends up happening is once you've collected those images, you create a positive vector file, which basically is stitching together all of your positive images. And then with that, you train your cascade with the positives versus the negatives. And then um, that has a bunch of parameters that we'll be talking about and the vector file does too, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But these are the main steps. You have to get images, you gotta get thousands of negatives, thousands of positives. You train the vector, you train the cascade, and then you can use it like we did in the previous tutorial. Now, um, with your 
your negative and your positive images, you have to have description files. For the negative images, this is a file that just contains by line the path to each image. So you need to have this so when you run uh, the training and stuff like that, it knows where to find all the images. So you just need to like, generally this is gonna be called bg.txt. Then for the positive images, it's a lot like the negatives, only it has a few more parameters. So uh, sometimes this will be called like info or pause.txt or something like that, okay? This is gonna contain the path to each image by line, along with how many objects are in that image. So that's the number one in our example line. And then, um, and then where they are located. So that's the rectangle coordinates for that image. So ideally, if you can, you wanna find images that are just of the object, and then you can just automatically say it starts at zero, zero, and it spans the full size of the image. And then you don't have to go through manually uh, saying where these images are, because that's, that's a real pain. But luckily, we're gonna create them based off a single image, which will be this watch image. Uh, and so it won't actually be uh, an issue really, but it will only detect that watch, right? So if you wanted to detect in general analog watches or something, you would need to go back and do the manual option. So um, finally, just some, some notes to make before we jump in. Uh, you're gonna want negative images that are larger than your positive images in general, especially if you're gonna be creating samples rather than collecting and labeling positives. Because what's gonna happen when we just create samples based on that one watch image is it's gonna take that watch image and just kind of like superimpose it on the negative images and that creates your positive image. So that's how that works. So, and then generally you're gonna have like maybe 100 by 100 for the negative images and 50 by 50 for the positives. And then obviously when you impose the positive on the negative, it will become a 100 by 100. Therefore, the images will be the same size. So if you're training uh, and you've got your image within, uh, so for your positives, let's say if your positive or if your object doesn't take up the whole image, then you would probably have the same size as your negatives and your positives. But because we're going to create samples, we're going to uh, automatically place our 50 by 50 watch on a 100 by 100 negative image and that creates our positive files. So if that's still confusing, feel free to ask below and I'll further kind of break it down or you can check out the text-based uh, version of the tutorial. Um, when it comes time to train, generally you'll even decrease the size even more, generally like a 20 by 20 or something like that. Um, and finally, you generally want to have double the positives as you do negatives. If you're using create samples, it doesn't matter. Just get as many negatives as possible. And then when it comes time to train, you just specify that, hey, the number of positives that I want to use is going to be double the negatives. So that's that. Okay, so once you're ready, you've got an idea of how we need to go through this entire process. It's a pretty big process. So there's a lot of steps here and we'll try to break it down as simple as possible. So um, now that you've got the idea, what we wanna do is actually begin to set up the server that we have. So I have this, the server, I just basically booted it up, spun it up and we're ready to go. Um, I am currently located in the root directory. I just logged in, so I'm in my root user basically. So just slash root. So you might be in slash, you know, whatever your, your new username is. So go ahead and get there. And then anytime you have a new server, you always wanna just go ahead and run um, apt get update. You might need to do sudo apt get update uh, or sudo apt get, um, and then the next thing will be upgrade, okay. So we need to get those and then we'll end up creating like our little workspace. And then once we're all done setting all this up, that's when we're going to, we'll probably cut there and then go to the next tutorial uh, where we start grabbing our images. So that was uh, update, go ahead and run an upgrade now. And yes. And after this we'll end up, uh, we're in our username, but then we're gonna kind of create a little workspace for where we're gonna actually, um, you know, put our code, our images and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then while we're waiting, I'll just kind of bounce back and forth since this kind of takes a while to do stuff. Well, the place that we're gonna to go to get images is gonna be this website here, it's ImageNet. So it's image-net.org. And what's cool about ImageNet is first of all, it works with WordNet identically, it's the same structure. So if you're familiar with WordNet, it's just a way to figure out what words mean, get synonyms and antonyms and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty popular if you've done like the NLTK stuff. 
Um, okay, we're going to pause from that and continue on over here in our server now that this is done. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make directory opencv underscore workspace or whatever you want to call it and then change directory into that directory. And uh, if you don't already have it, uh, sudo apt get install git. This is for GitHub so we can grab uh, the OpenCV. This will just let us get the latest version of OpenCV basically. And then we're going to want to clone that. So we're going to go git clone https colon slash slash github dot com slash capital I T S E E Z slash OpenCV dot git. Uh, for these lines that we're typing, you can actually, the, the text-based version of this tutorial is on pythonprogramming.net, so you can actually head there and get all these lines, and probably the next few lines I'm going to just send you guys there, uh, because they're kind of long, it's a lot of packages that we have to install, but I'll explain what you're doing uh, as you're installing it. So right now we're grabbing the OpenCV files here, so we'll let that rumble. So anyways, back to ImageNet. Um, you you can you get access to a bunch of images, but you can also just search manually for these images. Oh, we're done. <laughs> um, so now we're going to go back to our server and let's go ahead and I'm just going to start copying and pasting these commands. So this is for the compiler. So if you if you go to the link in the description, just do Control F for find compiler colon and you'll be on the line that we're on right now. Run that. We'll grab that. Sure enough. So we can search for something, like for example, we can search for a watch, okay? And sure enough, we get all these sin sets for watches. And the one that we want might be uh, analog watch, right? That's the type of watch. So we'll click that and we'll let that load here and we'll come back over. And now we're gonna install the libraries. So again, control F libraries colon would get you to where you wanna be. Install all these libraries. Oh, we're kind of double installing git there, but that's okay. Uh, yes. Back to ImageNet while that's going. I've lost my mouse. There it is. Um, so here we have just a bunch of images of watches. So you can click them and then you can even go to the URL that is this, you know, it's on these flickr.com. So um, you could, you know, you can manually download these, but <laughs> let's be real. So you can come to Downloads tab and they have all the URLs. So you can click on this and it's just a list of all the URLs that are of analog watches. So this is, we can uh, view the source, come down. We got about, yeah, 1,270 rows of watch URLs. Okay, so we downloaded the libraries back to our server. Hopefully this bouncing around isn't killing you guys. Uh, and now we're gonna do the Python bindings. Let's get those. We're almost done. We got really, I think, just one more thing that we gotta grab. Okay. So this is that list. So, so if you wanted to, to create your own positives, you would use this list. And then for example, most of these images actually are almost 100, that's no longer available. We'll actually be talking about this because if you notice on Flickr, what we're gonna do is we're gonna automatically go through and pull all these pictures uh, with a program. And this is a picture. I can't believe they did this to us, it's horrible. So we'll talk about how we can handle for when this nonsense occurs. But anyways, most of the time the image is like 100% uh, the thing that we search for, especially like here and, and here. So you could get away with saying all these images after you resize them, start at zero, zero, span for this thing, and then you could get a general search uh, going like that. Um, accuracy, like you're gonna have images like this where that might cause a lot of trouble. So keep that in mind. So um, that was all the uh, Python bindings. Now we're gonna get the OpenCV development library. So app get install lib OpenCV-dev. Do that. Yes, sir. And um, we'll let that download and, and we're good to go. But like I said, we're actually not gonna use these. It would take twice as long and, and actually this won't be that accurate because again, you've got a lot of images like this. You'd really need to scale them down manually. So I don't really wanna go through that process because <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a really tedious process. But if you wanted to, you can do that rather than use create samples, which if you're not familiar, you're still fuzzy about that, don't worry. You'll be clear on all of these commands by the time we get done. But instead of creating samples, you can actually create your own images from these images, rescale them or whatever, 
And you could even go through by hand and just rescale them because these are all much larger than 50 by 50 or 100 by 100 even. So scale them yourself, uh, crop them. Um, there are pro programs that you can run through and crop them pretty quick, but you still got to do it manually and that's a pain. Um, for watch, you could do edge detection, find the circle. There are algorithms to find circles with OpenCV actually. You find the circle, crop to that circle, save, go. That would obviously only work for watches, but it is, it's possible. And you could try to do algorithms like that each time, but um, we're going to leave that alone for now. <laughs> so, so anyways... Um, so that's that. So, 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 so that's how you would maybe do the positives. Was that enough so's? I'm not sure. Um, that's how you do the positives. So what about negatives? Well, we can use the exact same website for negatives. We can search for people. Okay. Click on the sin set for people. Awesome. We'll start exploring and, uh, sure enough, we get a bunch of people. Yeah. These people could be wearing watches, but by the time we scale these images down, you're not even going to see it. One of the ones that I'm going to use, actually one of the links, we'll use this people link, but we're also going to use sports and athletics. These are the two links we're going to use. So you could get the downloads for the people. You could get the downloads for sports and athletics. And my, uh, my opinion there is, especially with like sports and athletics, people might be wearing a watch, but they're probably not wearing an analog watch while they're doing sports. So anyways, um, that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. You're all set up at this point. You've got your server. If you're on um, Windows and you don't know how to set up servers and stuff like that, you can basically use this tutorial here, the introduction to practical flash for getting everything set up. I think at this point, this is a little bit more of an advanced tutorial. I hope that you guys just kind of know what you're going to use to connect to your server. But if you don't, I'm still here to help no matter what. So anyways, get to this point, get all the things you need installed. And then in the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to run through and we're going to um, run through ImageNet, basically those URL lists, and I'll, we're going to write a Python program that will automatically download, resize, convert to grayscale, um, and get rid of those nasty images like that Flickr image. Uh, do all that, um, save the images, and uh, go from there. So anyways, if you guys have questions, comments, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions, and until next time.